If you've ever built a strategy that performs very well in the back test but falls apart the moment volatility wakes up, then this video is for you. Today I will show you results of a strategy that is based on volatility regimes. So we will slice it to see if there is an effect of the volatility on the strategy. And if there is an effect, is it significant enough to pay attention to it or not? And spoiler alert, it is significant. Volatility is part of every market. You cannot get rid of it. No rules, no law can get rid of volatility. It's part of human behavior. And the way it works, it spikes up and then it falls down. It's available, like I said, in every market. And the best way to deal with it is to face it heads on and find a way to manage your risk during volatility. And I'm going to illustrate this through a simple strategy. We will construct a strategy that buys every single day, exit at the end of the day. So we are holding the day session, buying the morning, selling the afternoon, every single day. But attached to it, we will measure the volatility of the market so we can tell if that volatility regime is affecting the market. And if it is, by how much? I know this sounds very simple, but by removing all the indicator, all the noise, we get the raw performance of the market and the raw effect of the volatility. So this isn't about building the perfect strategy. Instead, it is about showing you how the market regime shapes the return of your strategy. So in order to do this test and see the effect on every market, we need to normalize how to measure volatility. And we can do this in many ways. The way I'm going to do it is through my market regime indicators. These are proprietary indicators given to Algo Trading Masterclass students. But like I said, you can do it with other measurements like ATR or standard deviation or Bollinger Bands and so on. The most important point is to normalize your results so it is the same across all markets. This is how market regime indicators looks like. So at the top here, I have the direction and at the bottom, I have the volatility. And as you can see, volatility was spiking and just going down and direction shifting up and down related to the market. But I want to bring your attention here at the top. So we can see that in bull market, the range of the bar, this is the S&P 500 daily session, averaging about 24 points. And in bear market, the range of the bar averaging about 48 points. This is double the amount. So when you are in bear market, the range of the bar from the high to the low is double the range in bull market. And that flies in the face of every trader on YouTube, I guess. Because wherever you go on YouTube, on the internet, you usually hear that the strategy has to work long and short the same. And the strategy has to work on all markets the same way in order to prove that this strategy works, which is total BS. This might work for long-term trend following where this noise doesn't matter. But for short-term traders, this is extremely important. In fact, you can tell from this market regime alone that when you are trading in bear market, you should exit quickly because you're achieving that target in, uh, in the same day than just waiting two or three days in bull market. And then for the volatility, we can see that the range in volatile market is about 37 points, while the range in quiet market is about 26 points. Now you can see the market spend almost the same amount of time in volatile and quiet time. It's about 41%, 44%. Now I know the difference here is about 11 points, but that translates to about 40% more range in volatile market. So again, the effect is huge on the market in terms of range. But what that has to do with our strategy? At the end, the strategy is trying to capture some percentage of a move. So the higher the move, the quicker you should exit because theoretically you're capturing that uh, move quickly. And of course, it works the same because now the trade can go against you faster in volatile market than in quiet market. So this is our test. We will buy every day on the open and exit the same day. 
So you can see this is buying every day and exiting the same day. Now I also did a test where we are buying every morning but selling the next morning. Basically we are holding the overnight move. Just to show you the difference that makes just holding overnight. Because again, this is another myth that is so prevalent in the market, you cannot get away from it, which is you should exit end of day because you don't wanna hold the risk of overnight. And I will show you the difference between holding overnight or exiting end of day. So these are the results of all the trades. We have about 4,800 trades. So statistically, very significant number of trades. And no surprise, we are making money because, you know, the S&P 500 has a huge drift to the upside. And this is the average. So you see, it's about $50, which is huge. So over almost 18 years, we're averaging $50 per day if we buy and sell every day. This is the same average per year since 2006. And you can see we have six down years and 13 up years. So the long edge is not random, and it's not because 2020 we made a lot of money. It is there, in fact, for the whole backtest. And now the average trade is split by the volatility state. So normal, this is the normal market behavior, and this is below normal, which is quiet, and this is above normal, which is volatile. And the average trade is a lot higher in normal than quiet and volatile. But if you remember, we have 15% of the time we are spending in normal. In fact, we can calculate, so this is the orange is the number of trades. So you can see here it's about 1,000, about 1,000, and here is 330 trades. Still, that's good information to know. Now, this data is beneficial, but it's not that significant, I would say, because you are spending 15% of the time in normal market based on volatility regime. And if you put that filter on a strategy, that will even take it lower. So this is not significant enough to build on top of it. But now let me split by the volatility rising or falling. So this is falling volatility, this is rising volatility. And again, the orange is the number of trades. And now you can see we are almost split in the middle. So this is good, this is what we want. And now we can see a huge difference. This is the average trade in rising volatility. It's about $28. And this is the average trade in falling volatility, and it's about $70. So it's almost 3x. And now I can dig deeper. So falling volatility is all good. And the rising volatility, the only time that is not performing well is in a quiet market. When the volatility is rising in quiet market, this is definitely not good market regime for the S&P 500. And if I bring back the number of trades, we can see that the quiet market regime with volatility rising is about 131 trades. So that's not a lot of trades. And here is a simple test that I did in Strategy Quant X. So we are buying every day and exiting in one bar. So if we look at it, you can see that Strategy Quantex is buying and selling on the same bar, but skipping one bar in between. But even then, so we will have like half the number of trades. And you, you can see instead of 4,000 something, we have 2,300 trades. But the strategy is positive. It's making money. Return to drawdown is about 1.8. And you can see if I put the Stadoasis volatility market regime falling, and then run the back test. But now look at this, it's four and a half, the uh, return to drawdown ratio. And just to prove that this is not a fluke, if we put the rising volatility, so this is the wrong regime to be in, and we do the same test, we have about a thousand trades, and now return to drawdown is 0.62. Now, like I told you, you can do volatility with ATR. So here I'm going to show you the ATR, and you can see we are making 1.53, and this is the drawback when you do it with ATR or any other indicator. 
first you have to normalize it for every market also you have to optimize for each market so if you optimize this you will find that uh, look back of five bars is the best way to look at it so you can see we achieved 2.7 return to drawdown yes it's more money but we are having a bigger drawdown but i mean if you keep optimizing you will find a good value so the difference is significant remember this is just buying every day blindly like we have no indicator no signal nothing now what i showed you is the overnight session and this is the end of day now the difference is even more prominent so if you're buying in the morning and selling end of day in falling volatility you are making about 50 dollars and in rising volatility you are losing about 10 dollars so holding overnight makes you a lot more money even in the worst market regime which is the rising volatility so this myth that holding overnight is more risk is actually not true when you take long historical look back and just to add that currently in our market you can have a flash crash during the day so it's not like uh, you are shielded from this big drop it can happen during the day or overnight so if it can happen in both times then you might as well hold the overnight to gain that extra profit by holding that risk and here i wanted to show you how the volatility works on different markets so remember my market regime indicators are normalized so there is no optimization and it works on all markets the same way and the advantage is then you can compare it with other markets so here the market regime volatility indicator applied to the crude oil market and for crude oil i used this session so from 9 to 230 for crude oil now of course crude oil trades 24 hours but this is the most active session and it doesn't matter what session you pick you will uh, conclude the same thing which is the crude oil is a very good short when the volatility is rising you can see this is the average trade and we are making 40 dollars if you are shorting crude oil when volatility is rising but you are making $10 if you are long crude oil when the volatility is falling. So the behavior is the opposite of the S&P 500. And if we dig down, we can see that when the volatility is falling, if we pick the volatile market regime, we make $188 on average. This is a huge difference. So the only thing that comes to mind now is how many trades are in this bar. And this is the problem. We have only 176 trades. So because number of trades, we cannot separate them by state. We can only separate them by volatility falling and rising. And you can use this as a great filter for crude oil, which is you can short crude oil when the volatility is rising. Or you build a short strategy on crude oil and you add this filter which is the volatility is rising. Now, of course, this can be applied to any market because again, the indicator is normalized. And the idea is to get strategies to work with the market regime you are in. So regardless of the signal that you are using to generate the trades, the filter, the market regime filters, direction and volatility will align your signal with the behavior of the market in that regime so if you take one thing away today take this market regime are much better than any other indicator and if you like this video then you will love the next one